Hey there everybody, and welcome to part 2 of this SE Linux review for the RHCSA. We'll go ahead and pick up right where we left off with the Restore Default File Context objective. Now, I've already shown you all how to use the RestoreCon command in the last video, which is the main point of this objective, but I also think it's important that I show how to set default file contexts as well. So what we'll do is create an example scenario where HTTPD will serve documents from a different location than the usual var www HTML directory. And then we'll need to set the default file context for that directory in our security policy to match what is required for the HTTPD binary to be able to access it. All right, let's do this. We can start off by creating an arbitrary directory where we'll host the files for this demo. So I think slash SRV is an appropriate place for us to work in. And I'm going to create a subdirectory in here and call it something special, like special. Not very creative, but that'll do. And next, I'm going to put an HTML file in here so that we have something nice to look at when we test. So I'll just echo greetings. And I'll redirect that into SRV special and call the file hello.html. Cool. Next, we're going to need to configure HTTPD to serve this directory. So we can go ahead and cd into slash etc HTTPD conf.d. And if I run an ls here, I'd like to welcome you to this handy dandy welcome.conf file. So I like to use this file as a template configuration for new configuration files we put in this directory, and you'll see why it's useful in just a second. But first, I'm going to copy this welcome.conf and make a special.conf, just like so, and open it up. And I can start here by uh, deleting a bunch of the lines that I don't need. So I'll just select a bunch of these, get rid of them. And what I really care about is this directory tag. So in here, I'm going to change this to be the slash SRB special directory that we just created. And down here with this alias, I'm going to change this to make slash special point to a location in the file system called slash SRV special. Just like that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to go back up here and add an options key, and uh, I'm going to do a plus indexes. And what this is going to do is tell HTTPD to generate a directory listing page when we're not viewing a document. So this will be a little bit useful for our debugging. We can see what HTTPD is able to enumerate. So yeah, that'll help out a little bit. And now I'm just going to write and quit the file. And uh, instinctively, we're going to need to restart the HTTPD service. So I'll just do a system CTL restart HTTPD. And we didn't get any errors, so that's all good. And now just to show you that it won't work right away, if I try to access localhost slash special in the browser, we'll be able to see this directory listing, but we won't be able to see our hello.html file. And further, if I try to access hello.html directly, we're going to get this scary forbidden error. And this is likely due to SE Linux getting in the way of HTTPD being able to access our file. So we can confirm that by just running a set enforce zero to make SE Linux permissive. And now if I check again, uh, we can see the greetings. Pretty cool. Uh, also, the directory listing will be complete now uh, since SE Linux is permissive. But we need to keep SE Linux enforcing, so we're going to change that back. And of course, it's not going to work again. And so what we need is a permanent fix. So we'll do that by using the se manage f context command and then running restorecon to apply a new default uh, type context to the directory. So if I uh, go ahead and show you the man page first, so that's man se manage dash f context. I'd just like to show you this. Uh, here at the bottom are some helpful examples if you ever forget how to use this command. And this specific one right here is going to resemble a lot of what we're going to do uh, in just a second. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this. The examples are always here and they help a lot. All right, so now we'll just type in a very similar command to what we just saw with a se manage fcontext-a-t. 
And so the A stands for adding a record for a specific object, and the dash T stands for type. And so after the T, we're going to type in the type context that we want applied. So that'll be httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore T. And after that, we're going to need to put in a regular expression representing the area in the file system where we want this change to be effective. So that'll be in slash SRV special. And this is important. We're going to do an open parentheses slash dot star close parentheses and a question mark. And now let me zoom in on this so that we can go over this a little bit more. So remember, first of all, to do this uh, in quotation marks. We need this to be taken as a literal. And next, uh, let's explain what this regex actually does. So the parentheses right here, they group a pattern. And so the pattern inside of these parentheses is a forward slash and then a dot and a star. And so this dot star is supposed to match any character zero or more times after this forward slash. And so this could represent the name of a file or a subdirectory, just like that. And so outside of this group, uh, we have a question mark. And so this signifies that the preceding pattern group, this thing, could match zero or one times. So all in all, uh, this regular expression could match to SRV special alone, or it could be its subdirectories and files within this directory. And yeah, so I hope that made sense. I'm going to zoom out again and just run this command. And so we got no problems there. That's good. And now uh, I'll be able to run restore con dash RV for recursive and verbose. And then I'll just point it to slash SRV special. All right. So as you can see, it relabeled SRV special, the directory, and it also relabeled our hello.html file. And just to show you new files and directories that I put here will also take up that type context that we set. So I could do something like make dir dash P SRV special a slash B slash C. And I could also do something like touch and then SRV special A slash B slash nonsense. And there we go. And now if I run something like an LS dash L capital R capital Z, so the capital R is for recurse and the Z is for SE Linux info, and then point it to SRV special, we'll see here that all of our files have taken up the correct type context, including the new ones. Cool. And of course, if I try to access these files from the web server in the web browser, uh, we'll be able to see them just fine, even with SE Linux enforcing. Awesome. All right. So yeah, uh, we just went super in depth here by using a real service as an example. So I really hope that helped. Uh, just a few more commands that I'd like to show you before we move into the next objective. Uh, that'll be the SE manage F context dash L command. And so this will list the default file context settings currently in the policy. And so I can drill down in here by using a grep and grepping for something like special that we set earlier. And there it is. It's indeed taken effect. It's right there. And yeah, uh, but let's say that I did something like a boo boo and I added an F context setting that I didn't mean to add like a typo. So for example, uh, if I pull up my old F context command, where is it? Uh, here it is. And I change this to something like uh, slash blah. Why not? And then just run this. It's going to add this F context setting to our policy. But um, let's say that this was like a typo or something and I didn't actually want to do that. So uh, we'll be able to list it in F context dash L. There's blah. And to get rid of it, we'll just run the same command again, but with uh, a dash D instead of a dash A. And so the dash D is for delete. All right. And bam, now it's gone. Cool. Uh, so yeah, um, let's now move on to uh, working with SE Linux port labels. So this boils down to using the SE manage port command. So if I run something like SE manage port dash L, um, uh, just like this, we'll see all of the uh, port type context settings that are currently in the policy. 
And I could drill down in here just like we did with fcontext. I could grep for HTTP, not HTTPD to be clear. This is a web server agnostic setting. Uh, I'll grep for that. And you'll notice this HTTP port underscore T uh, port type context. So this is important. We'll just keep this in mind. But basically, um, these are a bunch of standard and mostly common port numbers that are allowed by default in the targeted policy for HTTP services. But we don't want to settle for that. Uh, in fact, we want to learn something. So for our example, uh, we're going to make HTTPD host on an arbitrary port like 4080. And to do that, we'll go into the uh, slash etc httpd uh, conf httpd.conf file and scroll down a little bit here to the listen line and change it from 80 to 4080, just like that. And then I'll write and quit. And uh, of course, we're going to need to restart httpd. But um, if I try to do this all willy nilly, uh, without changing the uh, SE Linux settings, you'll see that we're going to get an error. And let's find out why. So if I run systemctl status and then httpd, you'll see here that this error is a permission denied um, on this make sock call for binding to the address uh, port 4080. So uh, we already knew that this would happen based on what we just did. Uh, we didn't change the SE Linux uh, HTTP port port type context to allow for this port. So we can fix that. Um, it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is just run a similar command to SE manage F context, except we'll just be working with ports. So we can do an SE manage port dash A dash T. And if you remember from a moment ago, we checked that that type context was called HTTP underscore port underscore t. All right, so it looks pretty familiar so far. The special part is that we're going to need to put in a dash p after the uh, context and then type in a protocol like TCP or UDP and then also provide a port number like 4080. So we already know HTTP uses TCP, so we'll just do that um, with port 4080 and just run this. And now if I try to restart HTTPD, uh, we're getting no problems there. And now let's go ahead and try to access our pages from this new port. So if I refresh the page, uh, it's not serving on port 80 anymore. So we're going to need to change that to port 4080. And there we go. We're able to access our stuff just like before. And uh, for completeness, let me just remind you that you can use a dash D here to uh, delete the SE manage setting, just like we did with F context. So if I do that, um, and go back here. Um, looks like it's still working because the service is running. But if I restart the HTTPD service, uh, we're going to get that same error again. So yeah, there's a little bit of a deep dive into how that works. But I'm going to change it back to uh, an add, not a delete, because I want this to work. Yeah, so now it'll work. There we go. Yeah, so uh, one more thing is uh, just the man page for se manage port. So that'll just be man se manage dash port. And just like before, there are examples at the bottom of the page, and they resemble a lot of what we just did, especially this one right here. So yeah, just keep this in mind. Uh, maybe you forgot like you needed the dash p or something like that. It's always good to be able to check on it with these examples. Makes everything easier. So I'm going to quit out of man, and I'm going to bring this video to a close because of the length. So I'll try to bring out part three as soon as possible, so stay tuned for that. And of course, I hope this video was useful for you. And as always, thanks for watching.